Hi Year 11, this is Miss Mahmood and Miss Sheikh and we're here to deliver the poetry lecture on The Manhunt by Simon Armitage. Um, we're going to go through the poem first. So, The Manhunt. After the first phase, after passionate nights and intimate days, only then would he let me trace the frozen river which ran through his face. Only then would he let me explore the blown hinge of his lower jaw and handle and hold the damaged porcelain collarbone and mind and attend the fractured rudder of a shoulder blade, and finger and thumb the parachute silk of his punctured lung. Only then could I bind the struts and climb the rungs of his broken ribs, and feel the hurt of his grazed heart. Skirting along, only then could I picture the scan, the fetus of metal beneath his chest, where the bullet had finally come to rest. Then I widened the search, traced the scarring back to its source, to a sweating, unexploded mine buried deep inside his mind, around which every nerve in his body tightened and closed. Then, and only then, did I come close. Right, okay, year 11. So, first of all, I'll start talking to you uh, about some of the context of the poem, which is uh, assessed in AO3 in the exam. So, as you can see, uh, The Manhunt was written by Armitage as part of a documentary series uh, called The Forgotten Heroes, The Not Dead. And in this documentary, they shared, they shared the real life stories of soldiers who had suffered trauma um, and irreparable damage caused by war. The Manhunt is also based on the experience of and um, written from the perspective uh, of Laura Beddoes, the wife of Eddie, Eddie Beddoes, who was a um, soldier who served as a peacekeeper in Bosnia. Um, Eddie was discharged from service and he suffers and suffered from PTSD. And this is explored by Armitage in this poem. Um, and we'll, we'll talk more about that as we get on to looking at some of the key quotations. Uh, the poem describes how Laura desperately hunts to find the man that she once married beneath Eddie's deep physical and mental scars. And again, we'll talk more about how this is a recovery process and a healing process uh, for them as a couple. So the themes explored within this poem, the first one is the impact of war uh, and the impact that war has had on an individual and on their life as a whole. For Eddie, this led to PTSD, which in turn impacted his marriage and life even long after he returned from war. Um, so you could say the effects of war are long lasting and devastating long after soldiers turn home. Um, and one of the other themes is loss. It can be explored in this poem through the loss of the bond of the husband and wife and how the wife seeks to find her husband or the man she want, uh, he once was. Um, and that loss kind of links to the title, which is the man hunt. She's looking for something. She's hunting for um, someone um, and love and relationships because of the nature of their relationship and the struggles that the trauma introduces into their, into their marriage. Uh, the overall message is that war has a devastating and lasting impact physically, emotionally, as well as psychologically. And the traumas of war, um, recover, I mean, the, the recovering from the traumas of war takes much longer time than physically recovering. So he's got his scars, um, his physical scars on his face, but the mental scars are there and it takes a long time for him to get over that. Um, um, and also you could look at the, the, the devastating and lasting impact of war, not only on the soldier themselves, but how that how war can impact the soldier's family and their partners in particular, as we see in the manhunt um, with the relationship and the marriage between Laura and Eddie being um, impacted by this. Um, and how war, like how war has put the strain on their marriage. But we also notice that L Laura is very determined to help um, fix this relationship and her, her love and determination for her husband is clearly very strong as she's able to support him through this healing process like this, this emotional uh, and psychological healing process that he needs um, due to the PTSD that he has suffered as a consequence of war. So we're going to track through the poem. Um... Uh, as you're probably aware from your lessons year 11 um, it is crucial that you are selecting a range of quotations from the poems in the exam and that you are tracking through as much as possible in particular with when you when you write a single 15 mark response to the poems so we always encourage you to look at quotations from the beginning the middle and end 
uh, sorry, at the end. And a good range of quotations would be roughly six to eight, depending on the length of the poem. So we've selected some of the most prominent um, quotations or the most sort of key quotations that have really striking imagery within them. And we're just going to like talk you through them and explain a little bit more about them. So I'll start off with looking at the opening line of the poem. Um, so Laura starts, or the speaker, Laura of the book, speaker of the poem, Laura, starts with after the first phase. So in the first line, the use of the word phase suggests that this is a process um, and that it is going to take time. And as we read on, we continue to see the use of time related words, uh, the repetition of the use of the, of the word after um, suggests that she has to gradually build a trust, rebuild the trust between herself and her husband, Eddie, um, the use of then, which is a use, it's conditional that he can only um, one, only once that he can trust her that they can move on as a couple. So it is, a, a like we said, a healing process and a recovery process, both um, psychologically and physically, but also emotionally in their bond as a couple. Um, next line we're going to look at is only then would he let me trace the frozen river which ran through his face. Um, when she says, when Laura, his, um, his wife, Eddie's wife, refers to... Uh, or says only then it sort of implies that there's permission required um, and that kind of goes into their relationship and how there's a bit of a gap there that she's trying to bridge um, and then she refers to his um, physical scars um, likens them to a frozen river that metaphor um, evokes the beautiful um, imagery of nature um, suggesting that she, despite the fact that her husband is disfigured by this war physically, he is still remaining, he's, he remains beautiful to her. Um, is there anything else we can add? No, so just that fact that there's permission required, um, and we can link that to the previous line where um, recovery is a slow process. Um, and she, she does require permission to finally um, get close to him. OK, so I'm going to talk you through the next quotation um, that we've selected, which is the fractured rudder of shoulder blade. Now, I personally find this, quote, this, this quotation quite interesting, and I really like the use of contrasting imagery that Armitage has used here. Um, so it's interesting that Armitage would compare um, like the shoulder blade to the rudder of a boat. So um, you may have learned in your lessons that a rudder of a boat is uh, the steering mechanism which is used to kind of guide your way uh, as you as you use a boat. And the fact that he's saying that the um, the fractured rudder of shoulder blade is implying that um, he can no longer steer his way or find his way. So he is truly lost, which links to kind of our theme of loss. Uh, how is Eddie lost? It, I, I would say like by going to war and the impact that war has had on his life, he, he, he has kind of lost the man he once was. Laura has lost the husband that she once had. So that's how you could kind of use this quotation to link it to the theme of war. Um, he is lost due to his injuries, both physical and psychological, emphasizing the damage that war can cause. It also contrasts our notion of what a soldier represents. You know, you know normally we think of a soldier, we think of somebody who's brave, strong, and almost indestructible. Yet here, we have Armitage showing us how fragile and delicate um, they can also sorry how fragile and delicate they can also be bringing us to the back back to the fact that they are ordinary men who willingly go out to war to sacrifice themselves at, um at the cost of like you know their emotional and physical well-being um the parachute silk of this punctured lung again we've got a metaphor <clears throat> so she's likening his lungs um to um parachute and uh, the thing to note here is that a parachute is supposed to be very strong okay so what's supposed to get you out of a um um it's a safety mechanism yeah, it's a safety mechanism um and parachutes are supposed to be extremely strong they're supposed to be finely woven and this evokes a contrast between the tough outer persona expected from a soldier um and contrasts it with their fragile um mental state so we've got that punctured lung that is rent parachute is rendered useless now because there is that puncture in there and it, got, it goes again to show his um his mental trauma the mental trauma he has sustained from war um the next quotation we have for you is and feel the hurt of his grazed heart um 
I guess with this one, again, you can like look at it in the sense of it, it kind of uh, refers to sort of the emotional and psychological damage that soldiers and in, in this in this poem, Eddie has suffered as an impact of war. Um, so war has co caused both physical and emotional injuries. Um, I guess, like, how do you mend a grazed heart? It's and Laura in this poem, when she she talks about the way she has to gradually and very carefully kind of regain Eddie's trust and close the the, the, the drift sort of the gap. the gap yeah the gap that's come in their relationship um and she has to do it really delicately and taking all taking on almost a sort of a maternal caregiving role as she does this like really gently but like you can see that her and her, yeah go on, Miss. yeah and you have to remember she she, she only gets to this place where um with permission it's only then that she has that permission to mend his grazed tarp um let's yep. move on to the next one i think um the fetus of metal beneath his chest okay so i really like this image and like, i think it's quite one of the most sort of prominent images within this poem and one that students tend to remember quite easily um so like I guess when you look at the the idea or the notion of a fetus, it is something which you know it's like it represents the start of life or the start of a new chapter in your life. Whereas here, the fetus of metal is a metaphor for the bullet that physically harmed Eddie. Um, and as we as we, uh, as you read the poem, you can notice that Laura tracks through his body and and she chases the the. The, the route that the bullet took within his body. And then when we get to the fetus of metal beneath his chest, so you've got like this contradictory language once again. The fetus re could represent a new chapter in his life, uh, whereas a bullet is something which takes away life. So I guess you've got the... Yeah, that juxtaposition. The juxtaposition there. of so this... the possibility of a new life, but in fact, in this case, it's, it's it represents the end. The end, yeah. Or the, like the start of this, this new Eddie that is come, yeah. who's, who's come back from war. The, the changed, Eddie. Yeah, the, the traumatised Eddie, the changed man. Yeah. Um, unexploded mind buried deep in mind. Um, Okay, so when you look at this image of the unexploded mine, so landmines, you know, they're normally concealed within the ground, but yet you have to, they're very sensitive to any sort of movement. And I guess we see that, like, Laura has to be sensitive around Eddie because um, she she has to be really mindful of his PTSD because anything can spark an episode within him where he, he, he really lives that trauma of war. And the unexploded mine here could be, so, like, it, it, I, I personally think it's a direct reference to his PTSD. Yeah. Uh, do you agree with that, Miss? Yeah, and I think it also represents that intrusion of war into their domestic space and their domestic life. Um, and it's unexploded, suggesting that it is something that is going to, in, in at any moment, just, you know, um, self-destruct. It could happen at any yeah. time, yeah. So, so it's mental, unpredictable. It's un the unpredictability yeah. of mental trauma from war. Um, even though he's physically removed from war, yeah. he is always there in his mind. Yeah, and yeah, I guess once more you can link it to the horrors of war that he's experienced. Um, yeah. yeah, so let's move on. And then the final line, then and only then did I come close, um, nicely tying that um, the poem um, and going back to that, echoing that the second the second line, uh, the second stanza, where she um, implies that she needs permission. So throughout the poem, she is tracing through his trauma. She's physically tracing through his scars. Um, and it's only right at the end that she comes close to bridging that gap in their relationship. Yeah, I guess you can also, like, you, as we've talked about um, at the start of this, at this, of this lecture, that it is the whole poem represents that healing process mm -hmm. and that recovery process between them as a couple in their marriage, but also Eddie's physical and mental recovery from war and I guess that that final line kind of epitomizes that mm. and ties it in as Miss has just said as well and where, where <clears> she <throat> says uh, finally um and only then did I come close rather um she's finally found who she was hunting she's yeah she, yeah she's finally come close to the man it, and it's only once she, she can kind of connect with him from like what he's experienced is when she comes close is that there's that turning point mm. in there when she talks about um when she talks about the unexploded mind of his mind, it's only then when she begins to understand his psychological trauma that she actually begins to get close or to finding yeah. her husband. Yeah. Um, so the structure, we've got a series of short couplets um, which reflect um, the nature of their uh, the, the nature of recovery or the repetitive nature 
of trauma and how you have to keep doing the same things over and over again in order to um, get over or rather heal from yeah. the effects of war. Um, the repetition of only then reflects the wife's longing for a connection with her husband. Um, I guess you could talk also year 11 about how that is repeated throughout the poem so from quite early on in the in the beginning of the poem from stanza two and the fact that the poem ends with the same phrase only then yes. it kind of it shows Laura's determination and her, yeah. her absolute longing for like she's she's committed to make this marriage work she she understands that it's not the same as it once was yet she's committed and she's determined and she's stuck by Eddie throughout all of the the sort of the, the damage that war has caused um yeah and it's this it's through this repetitive process that she finally gains his trust <clears throat> and it's finally now that she has the permission to come close um and then we've got that repetition of only then how many times we've got one two three four five and it's only after those that she comes close so to compare this poem, um, we could compare it to A Wife in London. Yeah, particularly if you're talking about loss, then A Wife in London is probably the best poem for, to, to choose for this. If you were to get a question about loss, um, you would remember this because um, in A Wife in London also, well, it's written from the perspective of a wife, of a soldier. However, in uh, a man, The Manhunt, the loss is temporary because um, Laura, uh, by the end of the poem, Laura does come to come close to like finding her husband whereas in a wife in london the loss is more permanent because you know it, it, it results in the physical death of her husband so that that relationship cannot be mended that love cannot be returned or um rekindled yeah. and they both um yeah they both explore the negative impacts war has on a relationship um a wife in london is about the second world war and Hardy's criticism of the British Empire sacrificing men's life, again, the physical sacrifice of their life, whereas this one is talking about the mental trauma sustained from war. And, um, yeah, so the manhunt, the manhunt is about the peacekeeper in the Bosnian War and the effects of PTSD on a relationship. Uh, we could also compare it to Mamet's Wood and that theme of fragility seen throughout the manhunt he is a fra he is fragile as a result of the traumas he sustained in in war. Um, he is like a parachute silk, um, the parachute the parachute that is punctured. Um, he is that the mechanical imagery of the rudder, the cave that implies that it's sort of broken and his broken mm. mental state that needs to be repaired um, and fixed with the. And also you have got like the idea of the porcelain collarbone yeah. and the china plate within yeah. um, Owen Shear's poem. Which um, reflects Mamet's wood yeah. and there. There. And also, like how Laura has to be really fragile around him, like mm -hmm. the unexploded mind of his yeah. mind. She has to tiptoe around him. If we look at the, the use of verbs in the manhunt, for example, like it's a very gradual process. So, like she we've uses got a lot of tentative verbs. We've got yeah. handle, holes, trace, she has to kind of, yeah, She's very trepidatious around him. She has to sort of tiptoe. Yeah. Um, because again, the trauma of war is unpredictable. It's like he's got, there is that um, unexploded mind that can go yeah. off at any any moment. I think what I like about the the manhunt as well, like it. it kind of demonstrates that as yeah he's a he's an ordinary hu like human being he's a man he's fragile physically but also more so emotionally yeah. due to war yeah um docket decorum est we can compare it to um well yeah lasting impact of war the lasting impact of war the mental impact of war trauma um, trauma torment yeah um, like you know, Owen experienced war firsthand. Owen uh, Wilfred Owen experienced war firsthand, and he writes from a personal perspective of the horrors of war, what he sees, and the trauma that was caused by war. And we know that Owen sh suffered from shell shock, which we now know to be PTSD as well. Um, particularly, I think it's the fourth stanza in Dolce de Coramus. Yeah, that's, he, yeah, Coramus. That standout stanza, uh, the couplet by itself, which also reflects the couplets, the series of couplets in man, in the Manhunt where um, Owen refers to the um, the fact that you cannot escape the mental traumas sustained in war, even when you physically are removed from the battlefield, you are still constantly thinking about the guttering, choking and the drowning. And that's why in the, at the end of Dolce, Del um, Owen criticises um, like those who encourage young boys to go to war because yeah. he's like, you're not telling the truth, the truth or giving the, the true picture of what war is like. Yeah. Um, and he dismisses it as a bold, as an old lie. Yeah, the old lie. Great.
Thank you very much. Thank you for listening, Evan.